Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. Uh, if you have not seen this show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are about 70 of us now and growing. Uh, everybody does something different. I do nothing but elder law. The purpose of these shows is to supplement uh, the presentations that I do at the uh, Senior Center in uh, Vineyard Haven that I know are also uh, broadcast on MBTV uh, to help you understand the people and the programs that could affect your life and that probably are affecting your life as a senior. Many of you folks know about um, the program that is developed by the Martha's Vineyard Center for Living. And my friend Leslie Clapp is back. And I was, as I was mentioning to you, Leslie, you know, as I was thinking about this driving over here today, you were actually one of the first guests that I had on this show, and I think it was like seven years ago, seven or eight years it's ago. It's hard to believe. This is hard to believe, mm -hmm. yeah, because you had appeared, you had come to one of the, the uh, presentations right. in Tisbury because Sandy Cordolby had said, yep. oh, you've got to mm -hmm. have Leslie Clapp, this is a great program. Mm -hmm. And I said, what, you know? And, and so you came on, and, and so now, mm -hmm. right, these years yeah. later, um, the grand opening of your your new building That's is right. right. So can That's you right. just kind of talk about that a little bit? Just once again, for mm -hmm. folks who haven't tuned mm -hmm. in, if they've actually been under a rock for right. the last three years, to, uh, tell folks kind of you know how you got where you where you are briefly, sure. and then um, what's happening mm -hmm. on Sunday the twenty fifth okay. from four okay. to six p.m. So just a brief history, yeah, brief history. Um, and most mm -hmm. folks, m many folks would know this, but. Um, the Center for Living has been operating its programs and are mainly our supportive day program and everything else that we do um, out of the uh, generosity and, and uh, welcome folks at the Tis Tisbury and Edgartown Senior Centers. And that's been the case for many, many, many years. For a long time. It's for been a long a day time. day program right. running out of both mm -hmm. centers, right. primarily focused on right. Folks who uh, right, folks who are at risk if left alone, um, who may be from, experiencing yeah. um, e e physical or cognitive challenges. Yeah. Um, their caregivers, their families, and their caregivers need respite, and we provide a, a great program, um, either all or all day or, f or half day programs, activities, um, lunch, yeah. um, and all that. But we've been doing that in two different places for over 20 years. Right. Yeah. Um, and up until, and, and, for, and like four days a week. And four, four days, days a, week. a week, right. Right. And right. You had two days in mm -hmm. Egerton and two days in That's right. Mm -hmm. Tisbury. Yeah. Right. So with the same staff in both places, but we were having to go back and forth, back and forth. Um, and that just became, not only did it become, uh, uh, you know, too problematic for our staff, but for the staff and the, and the spaces at the senior centers, we were basically using their space twice a week and they had no opportunity to use those spaces for the programs that they wanted to do for right. the general community. Because your, 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 your census, also the number of people you were talking right. to. Keep mm -hmm. going. Has been, yeah. I'm having trouble with this camera, so I don't want you to break okay. what you're talking about. That's great. Right, yeah. Keep going. Is that possible to do that? Well, to keep talk, doing this? Well, I guess it is. <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> we'll keep so, doing so, it. Yeah, so you, and so you were, you were going at both places yeah. and you, you, you were getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. so, of course, you were, you were right. getting to be like, like the 600-pound gorilla visiting yeah. the... Yeah visiting yeah, the house right. you know it was a lot of a right. lot of people and stuff and yeah. so then a few years ago so a few years yeah. ago um actually probably about 10 years ago we really started seriously thinking about well we have to we have to do something different we yeah. need to find a place that where we can house this program and our offices and 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 expand yeah. because we could see the need coming um for more services for for um you know the the folks that, that we serve, the right. elders who are more physically or cognitively disabled and they want to stay at home and they want to be engaged in their community. Right, even with a little memory problem, you right, still want to exactly, stay at home. Right, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, we've, we've had a great board and over the years different people have been on the board and, and tried to help us find a place to move to. Um, and then um, about, let's see, in 2015, um, the opportunity for the VNA building, the, uh, where VNA had been in yeah. Vineyard Haven, yeah. um, it was proposed that uh, we would try and get the towns and the county to support the purchase of that building um, because it was so needed. Um, and I remember right about now, in about March of 2015, right. mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. when I was meeting with you folks. Right. 
and we were talking about how to get to all of the town meetings mm -hmm. and convince all of the finance mm -hmm. committees and everybody and who was going to go where right. about right. the need to, to do right. this. To do this building, right? yeah. So, um, and it everybody was, bought in. It, the, it, all, all it was six amazing. Towns. It really yeah. was amazing the support mm -hmm. that we received and really the sort of, sort of upswell of um, generosity from all the voters in the, all the towns. And, you know, all, all, there's all, with something like this, there's always skepticism here and there. And we were able to convince, you know, the towns that this is something that they could do and we could, uh, yeah, they could support us and we would be able to move forward. So uh, that was in 2015, um, and then really coincidentally, very shortly after that, uh, in that same year, sometime around in the summer, um, we received um, word that we had been um, uh, given a huge donation, a huge donation that was intended to yeah. help us find a place or um, help us renovate a place. Or to renovate we, a place. So, it, it just coincided with, um, you know, the purchase of that building. Um, and, a truly and star cross. That suddenly truly, you had suddenly you had amazing. the building coming, mm -hmm. and then this kind mm -hmm. of extra money to right. kind of ma really do the rehab right. that you really wanted to right. do. This you know? wonderful uh, former island resident, um, Margaret Yates, um, who had owned a, and operated she and her husband a drugstore in Vineyard Haven for many many years. Um, she. Um, in her later years, um, made it her mission to provide, you know, with the her estate, to be yep. able to provide, you know, more services for seniors, and she also um, wanted to dedicate some of her money for youth and scholarships. So that's the way she um, divided it up. But uh, we were the beneficiary of that, and so then we were able to proceed with. Um, taking this, the building there uh, yeah. and renovating it. And I remember it took well a while mm -hmm. to get the necessary special mm -hmm. legislation right. because you mm -hmm. had to be dealing right. with allowing the county to get this and then the potential lease with you folks and right. all this other stuff right. and that took yeah. so, that took a year. It took some time, yeah, yeah. that took a year. Um, lots of discussion and yeah. um, you know everybody being very supportive and you know we were able to work it out. So um, yeah, so that took about a year and then um, just about a year ago, so I think it was a year ago in April, yeah. um, we were able to, um, uh, you know, get some bids um, uh, because we didn't have to do the public bidding process. We're a nonprofit, so we were able to um, get some bids from local folks, and we um, settled on uh, Mark Nicotera with Trademark Services. I want to give a shout out to him because he, he and his crew have been amazing um, they yes. have done a wonderful job and you keep also, talking about the suggestions that they brought right, to you exactly. regarding improvements exactly. even as you went along which have been terrific and, the, and yeah. the other the other crucial part of that team were John Zeisel and Mark Maxwell and John Zeisel is um, you know a, a, he was our, our um, design planner um, he is the um, president of Hearthstone Foundation and they do they develop programs and spaces for folks, um, mostly assisted living, but yeah. programming space for folks with um, cognitive challenges and physical challenges. And his um, architect, Mark Maxwell, is a, a, an expert in this as well. So they were our consulting team, and they were the team um, that really put, to get, put together the design for this building. And, 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 um, and once again, this is one, one of those fortuitous things, because you're right. Martha's Vineyard, so it happens that mm -hmm. this national nationally known right. expert consultant mm -hmm. has a place in either Chilmark or West Hillsbury. West Hillsbury. Yeah. Right. She's right. in West Hillsbury. That's yeah. right. right. Yeah. So so that's, that's always wonderful yeah. when they can, when he gets an excuse to come down. Everybody right. wants an excuse, yes. as I found myself, right. to come down. Right. So, so he's, yeah. he's become a great friend and supporter. Um, and the team that, um, that we had then moving forward to renovate the space was supreme, superb. So, um, and so that's, that was, that took the last, you know, eight, nine months. Yep. We were able to move offices into the, the space in December. And then over the last two months, we've, mo we've gradually moved more programs and, and, um, and all that into the space. We're now fully operational. And now, so you're going. Um, and yeah. you know where the trash bags are. Right? I do. Well, so we were, I'll you know, find we, them. We, right. We were talking, <laughs> we were talking before about, was before right. we started today mm -hmm. about, you know. Right. It's a big deal just to get used to the space. And it you is. literally mentioned this it morning, is. people were like, where, yeah. where are the trash bag exactly? Right. Right. You know, because at yeah. the end of the day, the trains have got to run. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you don't that's have right. a theoretical program. Right. You have a program that's got to 
that's got to run. I didn't right? shovel out the trash the trash area soon enough, so uh, I have to call the trash well, back. Well, we'll learn all that. those well, little things. Yeah, but we'll learn all so those it's things. So it's a it's a it's a learning curve, and but we are it's a wonderful, very comfortable, warm, welcoming space, and we're in and operating. And today we've got the memory cafe in full swing over there. Um, we have, you know, anywhere which, between which 25 and 35 people showing up. 25 to 35 people now? That come to the cafe every week. And now, by the way, and as you know, I do a lot of this kind of work back in America too, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I think you, you probably are running now about the biggest memory cafe in the state. we are. Yeah. In the state. I think yeah. so. Yeah, and it went from like I zero so. to this right. in about Two years, a year and a half, it's really uh, short. Yeah, yeah. We it's been it's been about four years, and yeah. we've moved from place to place yeah. because we ha we didn't have a place, yeah. um, and so now we can settle in in our own home. And um, so it is. It's a weekly cafe. Many are monthly or biweekly. Yeah. Um, and ours is focused on music. Yours is um, weekly. Weekly. Yours is the only one that I know of that is. I, weekly. I believe so. Anyway. I believe so. And it's focused around live music, so we have uh, anywhere from four to eight live mu musicians, um, uh, many with, you know, other backgrounds. Uh, our banjo player is a former neurosurgeon. Uh, our uh, guitar player is a radiologist. Um, but it's a, it's a group of, yeah. you know, uh, amateur, semi-professional musicians, but they're wonderful, and they come every Thursday. And our, we sing and we have a little tap dancing or anybody who wants to get up and dance, um, you know, and it's from 10 to noon and we have a great, a great time. So. And, and I know that, and, and I know that your, the program, and one of the reason why I wanted you on today, right, mm -hmm. was that you've got your open house that is kind of, because I want to talk some more about your program, mm -hmm. but let's just go through that, mm -hmm. that. So your open sure. house is? Is on March 25th. Sunday, March 25th. Sunday, March 25th from 4 to 6. Six. From four to six, yeah. Uh, at, at our new building, we're getting our, our parking lot all uh, repaved and set up today right. or over the next couple of days. So For we should be all come. ready with our God, parking. God willing and not too many more snowstorms. That's storms. right, exactly. Right. So March 25th from four to six. And tell gonna... people the address, but also how to get. For right. us dopes, how, how, right. how do you get there? Right. I've, I, have, I have missed this mm -hmm. two or three times right. now. So, I, I, you know. Right. Um, so we're, our address is 29 Breakdown Lane. It's in Vineyard Haven, off of State Road, um, and then off of Holmes Hole Road. So, um, so off of State, you take Holmes Hole Road. Holmes Hole Road, and, and then it's and your second left. A breakdown Lane is your second left off of Holmes Hole Road. Okay, and Holmes Hole Road, for po folks who aren't from, for, who are from far away, might mm -hmm. be up island or something, mm -hmm. right? I remember my, my uh, paralegal told me, who's, who's, who lives in Vineyard Haven, she said, so it's, so it's st State Road, past the, the Black Dog, right. right? It's the first right. left, Yes. if you're heading out, mm -hmm. out, out of town, mm -hmm. past the Black Dog, right? right? And yeah. that's Holmes Hole Road, and, that's then it's, right. and then it's the second left the off second of that. Off All right, that. for yeah. folks who need to yeah. try to, yeah. to try. So now the program is running, now is it still running as a four-day program at this point? The Supportive Day program is still running as a four-day program. Um, yeah. And we're, you know, we're in the process of, um, you know, ramping that up over the next few months. Um, we do have the cafe, on Thursdays, so yeah. um, you know the plan is to to work more day program activities ar around uh, after the, after the cafe or, or something like that. So, I see. You know we're working on that. And but, for yeah. people, so and and and, and so the, obviously the, the cafe is is a tremendous success. Right. Um, and the day program, how many people typically would be there on a particular day? So typically, and this is this is based on where we were, yeah. um, and and so. It's 15 to 18 people a day. Yeah. Um, now we have more space, so we, you know, we're in the process of, you know, reaching out and um, doing more outreach and and having more folks um, be interested in, in so, coming. So, so you could accommodate up. more people yes, at this can. point. Yes, yeah. And yeah. so for people, and and so and and but there's a lot of folks that are now coming. So for people who are interested. Mm -hmm. Who should they who should they call what should they do yeah well they can call our, our main number our main number hasn't changed 508-939-9440 and i bet carl here at mtv will be probably carl and holt always yep. takes care of us he with will. banners and he'll have other yeah. stuff so they'll probably even include the email right, right. address right yes okay. i hope so and our website yep. Yep. so um so just you know, just call us just give us a call and and if um, i were thinking about this mm -hmm. and if i were thinking about this for myself if i were thinking about this for someone that i'm that i'm 
caring for, mm -hmm. describe who, who that person would be. Who would be the ideal new person to be going to come to, to the come supportive to, day? To come to supportive yeah. day. Um, somebody who is um, uh, maybe in early stages of memory loss, yeah. or somebody who is just isolated because of um, physical uh, Im impairment, or even just you know they don't drive anymore. Um, and they just can't get out as much right. anymore. Um, and maybe they live alone, or maybe they live with a family member, um, and they they um, they want to be engaged. They want to be involved in their community, and um, we can provide that. Um, we can provide activities and tailor activities to, you know, interests and to things that are and, interesting. and needs. Right, exactly. Yep. Um, so. And 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 you were talking about transportation. So if I wanted to go and I didn't have transportation. Mm -hmm. How could I get there? We do have um, a contract with the VTA, the lift service, so that is an option. Um, you can um, be transported, picked up at home, brought door to door, uh, and then at the end of the day, that's They'll your ride you home. Or if you, the family can opt to make their own, do their own transportation, so it's yeah. optional. Um, and and regarding the memory cafe, so, so regarding the, su the supportive day mm -hmm. piece, you're figuring many caregivers will drop off their loved one there, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and take some time for themselves to right. do respite, right. get the groceries done. Right. As, as, mm -hmm. as one woman told me who was going to one of these, I just want to take a nap. Mm -hmm. I just want to go home and take a nap. Yeah. But, for the, but for the memory cafe folks, mm -hmm. right. describe that a little bit more right. and, and who, what, what kinds of folks may be interested mm -hmm. in going, sure. and, and, and it, specifically in terms of the caregiver. Mm -hmm. right? Right. So we have folks who come. So the, the, the uh, cafe is a, it's a free program. Uh, it's a drop in as you wish program. It's not a, you don't have to be there at 10 and leave at noon. Um, so it's, it's uh, uh, casual. Um, folks, some folks come um, on their own. We have folks who drive themselves and, and come because they enjoy the music. Um, we have folks who a caregiver comes with them and mm -hmm. stays with them, and the caregivers enjoy it just as much as they do. We, some folks get dropped off. Um, we do have folks who come by taxi. We have folks who come by the lift. Um, so it's, uh, and we have a group of folks who come from Seven Hills um, uh, Deven Developmental Services. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they come with the, a group and their caregivers, and they enjoy the music as well. So it's a very um, sort of inclusive, um, eclectic group of folks yeah. um, that enjoy the social time, the music, the museum, Martha's Vineyard Museum comes once a month and does a great presentation with local uh, history or local artifacts and things like that. Um, so uh, it's, and, and we see. have- So the program really varies. From, it yeah. does, it does. It does center around music. There's always yeah. music, yeah. but we have different um, other, you know, uh, either presentations or conversations. Yeah. One of our musicians, the neurosurgeon, um, he does a talk every now and then on the brain and how it works and, you know, why your memory is the way it is or why, why music is so important. Just, yeah. just different That's interesting great. tidbits about the brain and how, and how, we, how, we, how we work. That's great. It, now, um, it was, so. now, what's interesting about what you're describing is that I know that for, for most of the memory cafes on the mainland, first mm -hmm. of all, they're not weekly. They're right. usually monthly or even mm -hmm. every two months. Mm -hmm. um, and for, the, for all of them that I know of, the caregiver needs to st stay, right. Right? right? Typically because of their concern because of staffing issues, because mm -hmm. they don't have enough of the right. folks. But, you, but you, uh, your program is, is well enough staffed that you don't, yeah. have, to, you don't have a yeah. concern about it. Yeah, we that. have, we, there's typically at least three staff yeah. and a volunteer or two who are available. We, we serve coffee and snacks and um, chat with people, um, make people comfortable on all that. So, so it is a mix, you know, yeah. it, it isn't, you know, required. And, if, and, if you're, and for people who are kind of hesitant, nah, I don't know if I'm going to like mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. they should go to the open house because yeah. you got to see the yeah. space. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really right. beautiful. Right, it is. It's really beautiful what they've done, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, don't look at the outside of the building. This is a yeah. butler building, right? Yeah. This isn't a little, little she-she, no. you know, no. and you got some, and you got your, and your neighbors aren't, this isn't like a little residential. No, but it's not. Right? No, right? it's, it's. Um, but it's funky. You know, it it's is. A, it's. And you know we've got the resources to really. I don't know really if these young people know what funky means, but the older ones. Well, are yeah, but, um, but we're working on the outside, yeah. and we've got a great landscaper, and uh, you know we're we're. Um, Mark has, Mark Nicotera has been wonderful. He's connected us with um, some great people to 
to ongoing help us to, with maintenance to, to and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so before so. we end, give me your own sense now, which I've always asked you to do when you come, of kind of where you're going next, mm -hmm. because you always seem to have in the back of your mind mm -hmm. what if, you know, if resources are available, mm -hmm. if the communities are really supportive, right. kind of where you would right. go next with yeah. this. Because as, as I've, you know, we just had someone come over from the Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Association because I wanted mm -hmm. them Right. to see what you've done because they, 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 have, they came away just astonished. Right. You really are in many ways the example of, of what, a, what I always think of as a dementia-friendly community, mm -hmm. the, the, the key organization right. to cause right. there to be a dementia-friendly right. community. So what, what do you think is in terms of your next? Right, so I, you, you know go? I would say, well so in, in anticipation of our new space and yeah. you know the need to fill the space, um, and also the realization that there's there's a great need in the community. I know there's many many people out there who um, are struggling, um, trying to figure out how they're going to manage to stay in their home and be comfortable and safe and take care of their loved ones. Um, and so about a year ago, um, I sort of partnered with um, my good friend and colleague Nancy Langman, who is a nurse practitioner. Um, she's got a long, long history in um, dementia care and, um, um, you know, just, she did her thesis on Alzheimer's and caregivers. So she, uh, so she and I, we, we wrote a grant and we got a grant from Permanent Endowment to start a, um, a, a more individual sort of counseling program. So we've, yeah. um, and it's very, very short money and very, small start, but we've been doing, uh, and ma mainly Nancy has been doing consulting with families, you know, visiting them in their homes, actually trying to help them, to the actually going to the homes, yeah. and, and doing some, you know, work around memory screenings and other, other tools to, to help families kind of figure out where they're at and, wh you know, what resources might be available to them in the community to help them, including the Center for Living, to help them manage um, you know the uh, the process of of managing um, you know the disease process whatever it may be right. and stay at home and be and be safe. Um, so uh, we've been doing that for about a year. We're all, you know we're looking for ongoing funding because it's something that's been very very well received and very popular and um, we need to do more of it. You know we, we get yes. referrals all the time. We work closely with the councils on aging with um, community services core program. Um, and so we're really trying to put together a real strong, um, you know, sort of case management support system for the families that we that we deal with. Yeah. Not just in the uh, families in the supportive day program, but other families who, but other families. May, yeah, who may um, may or may not um, end up being uh, more engaged with our programs. But it's it's a way for people to. Um, to stay, it's a way for to, people to, to stay home. Right, exactly. You know, exactly. a dementia-friendly yeah. community, to me it's easy to understand it. It's a place where I can stay home, mm -hmm. no matter how confused right. they might get, right. even right. if I get a little more frail, yeah. and I'm, I'm gonna be safe, right. and I'm not gonna be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna still be, I'm gonna be proud of myself. Right. Right. And right. for you to be able to give that. And feel accepted in the community. And feel accepted. Feel comfortable in the community. Right. And so that's the other, the other piece of it, and we, we, we're working on that now, developing a, uh, a training and education program for the community, um, which we'll be launching very shortly. Um, we got some grant funding for that as well. We'll start with doing some trainings with the first responders, EMTs, police, um, and then expand that, and this is with the, with the Councils on Aging, and expand that to a train the trainer program where folks in, will we'll train folks in the community to, um, you know, to understand the, the challenges and the issues and be able to recognize uh, folks in the community who might need help and be able to reach out to them. So. And, and getting folks to the point where, right. me, where, where, where me having memory problems mm -hmm. isn't an embarrassment. Right. It's a symptom of right. a disease. Right. It's a disability. Right. Right. You've got to deal with the disability. Right. Right. And, and, you know, with the right supports, you can function for a very long time and very comfortably in a community that recognizes um, your challenges and is able to um, step up and, and incorporate that into their everyday life. And it just so. becomes part of, just, just part of life. I remember, right. once again, right. I remember re he right. hearing somebody refer to this, this, this grocer who mm -hmm. was a, at a supermarket in the UK. Mm -hmm. Who got very involved in dementia? He said, mm -hmm. "He said these are, you know, you, we, we're used to the disability. Mm -hmm. in what we think of typically as ramps. Mm -hmm. These are simply mental ramps. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if yeah. you have those, yeah, heard that before. people can yeah. still live here mm -hmm. really happily. Right. Well, right. Leslie, it's always wonderful. It's always wonderful to kind of he see through your eyes what the future may bring and also to see yeah. what's happening right now. Yeah. So once it's again, exciting. this Sunday, or excuse me, this Sunday, Sunday the 25th, 25th. Mm -hmm. um, at, from 4 to 6 That's right. at your location, which at, is off mm -hmm. of Holmes Hole Road. That's right. And actually the address is what again? 29 Breakdown Lane. 29, 29 mm -hmm. Breakdown right. Lane. Yep. And it's open to the public. You've sent some invitations to the selectmen and some yes, others we because, have. Yes, we have. you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're spending their taxpayers' mm -hmm. money on your behalf, right? right? But everybody's welcome. Yep, everybody's everybody, welcome. absolutely. And it's always wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. And uh, um, I, hope you, I hope we'll see you. I'm actually bringing my wife over uh, that day so that I can actually go to see the grand opening. And I, ho and I hope you can all make it to see Leslie and to wonderful. see what the programs are that are being offered. Uh, by the Center for Living. Thanks for watching. I'll look forward to talking to you on the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.